Hello, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. My name is Carly Vaughan. I am a third year PhD student in systems engineering at Arizona State University, and I represent the Neuromuscular Control and Human Robotics Lab under the mentorship and guidance of Dr. Hyung Lai Lee. Today, I'll be presenting my research paper, Design and Validation of a Soft Robotic Ankle Foot Orthosis, SRAFO Exosuit for Inversion and Eversion Ankle Support. Chronic ankle instability, or CAI, is a long-term disability that is often the result of recurrent ankle sprains. For reported ankle sprains, 85% of injuries can be attributed to lateral sprains. Current methods of CAI treatment commonly prescribe rigid ankle braces. However, this can limit ankle motion entirely and fix the joint at a neutral angle, which can subsequently lead to complications with mobility, increased risks of injury, or pain due to gait adaptations from having your ankle fixed while walking. One potential solution to this is the field of wearable robotics. Wearable robotic devices designed specifically for the ankle face several challenges, however. Some of these include weight, computationally heavy programming algorithms, joint alignment issues, and cost of the overall device itself. Soft robotic solutions have demonstrated successful designs in the past for providing lightweight, cost-effective assistive devices with flexible materials that have forgiving interactions between the robot and the human joint. There are limited studies for soft robotic applications that specifically address issues involved with CAI and lateral ankle sprain prevention. We wanted to explore these methods for providing variable stiffness to the ankle using soft robotics. This work also had preliminary investigation into using soft fabric-based actuators to provide lateral ankle support during the stance phase of walking. This work was presented originally last year at ICRA in 2019. In this work, we present our updated design for the SRAFO exosuit. It is designed to assist in inversion, eversion, or IE ankle support using pneumatic soft fabric actuators to increase IE ankle stiffness with minimal impacts to ankle dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, or DP stiffness. This actively varying change in stiffness is used to prevent ankle buckling in the IE direction and provides a comfortable dynamic solution that looks and feels like a regular garment when inactive. It can be simply worn over the user's shoe and activated for support as needed. In this work, we also present a new approach to categorizing the resulting stiffness of the exosuit at the ankle joint using other robotic testing platforms. The SR AFO exosuit was made from a custom neoprene fabric sleeve that wraps around the shank of the leg and secures under the arch of the foot. The soft fabric actuators were placed vertically on either side of the ankle, starting at the base of the talus and running across the medial and lateral malus of the ankle to mimic the placement of traditional ankle braces for medial and lateral instability. The SR AFO exosuit slips on easily like a boot and the donned off time is minimized by using an adjustable Velcro strap which holds the exosuit with a snug fit around the ankle joint. It still allows for comfortable and natural movement while worn by the user. The exosuit was designed as a one size fits all device and adapts to the foot size of most adult subjects. Inextensible nylon anchor points were embedded into the lining of the neoprene sleeve. These inextensible points hold the actuators in place at the top and base of the actuator. The target threshold for IE stiffness was set at 70 newton meters per radian. This value is significantly higher than what can be achieved by unimpaired young individuals with the highest voluntary contraction of their ankle muscles. The actuators were fabricated using a single rectangular sealed pouch, which was then folded in half lengthwise and sewn along the outside of the heat seal to form a closed loop. When inflated, this loop forms a hollow cylinder. This behaves and looks similar to that of a blood pressure cuff, which is commonly seen at most doctor's offices. Previous studies have shown successful applications of beam-like inflatable soft actuators. The presented actuator design in this work aims to minimize actuator deflection without increasing the internal volume. The design of the soft actuator was modeled using geometric programming of soft materials using assumptions that have been established in previous work. Inspiration for this design was drawn from Castigliano's theorem used in beam theory for determining deflection of a cantilever beam. The soft actuators were modeled as a cantilever beam fixed on all sides at one end and free to move at the other, where a transverse load is applied as can be seen in the figure on the right. With equivalent cross-sectional areas, the hollow beam has the higher moment of inertia and therefore a higher resistance to beam deflection for the same internal volume. An FEA simulation was run using a dynamic explicit environment. 
thin 2D homogeneous shells were used to create each layer of fabric actuator, and section partitions of those shells were tied to create the seams. The solid and hollow actuators were simulated using two different models. The second, for the hollow beam, was created by two overlapped extruded cylindrical shells tied at each end to seal a continuous volume chamber in the shape of a ring when pressure load is applied. The following steps were completed at four pressure levels for 10 points as shown in the next graph. Pressurization, stabilization, and the applied point load. Deflection was measured as the change in angle from the starting position to the final position. This was also ex completed experimentally by replicating the same process of using two fabricated actuators and applying the same point loads for the same pressures. The actuators became less predictable at low pressures. However, as pressure increased, there was a higher resistance to bending and a higher accuracy between trials could be observed. The deflection of the solid cross-section beam at 10 Newton point load was observed at 16.12 degree deflection, while the hollow cylinder cross-section beam at the same 10 Newton point load was observed at 12.82 degrees. This validates the model in ensuring that the hollow beam had a higher resistance to deflection than that of the solid cross-section beam. Stiffness characteristics of soft robots can be difficult to characterize when on the user. This can be due to slippage or the compliance of the materials against the user and their skin. To address this challenge, we have come up with a robotic approach that was taken using two sets of validation experiments to determine the most accurate results of the performance of the SR AFO exosuit. A quasi-static experimental protocol was implemented where the AFO was worn by the user during characterization to obtain stiffness values directly at the ankle joint. This was done for six healthy participants during characterization to obtain the stiffness values directly at their joint. The test conditions that were evaluated are, are as follows. Free foot, where there was no exosuit, zero KPA, where the exosuit was donned but passive, and then five increments of 10 KPA up to 50 KPA. Muscle activity was also recorded throughout these trials. The two trials were completed using two different robotic platforms, the AnkleBot, and a dual axis robotic platform, which will be discussed in the next slides. The first condition was using the SRAFO exosuit in a sitting position. A wearable robot, the ankle bot, was used to measure the 2D ankle stiffness in the sagittal and frontal planes. A quasi-static torque angle relation determined the resulting stiffness at the ankle joint. A specialized shoe connected to the ankle bot and interfaced directly with the motors. A quasi-static test protocol was used to measure ankle stiffness in this 2D space and the effective ankle stiffness for each of the 12 directions and 12 movements was calculated from the continuous vector field presented in the 2D polar plot that you can see here on the right. The results of the stiffness in sitting possession using the ankle bot across all six users showed an increase in ankle stiffness in the IE directions and a trend that followed with increasing pressure levels. While there was a slight increase in the DP direction for ankle stiffness, it was not following the same trend as observed with IE. The dual axis robotic platform was used to quantify the ankle stiffness in IE and DP of the right foot. The platform applied position perturbations to the ankle and measured the corresponding torques at the ankle using a force plate attached to the top of the platform. This was then used to estimate the mechanical impedance of the ankle joint. More can be found on the development of this platform at the citations listed below. A perturbation of three degrees and a duration of 100 milliseconds was applied in the eversion or dorsiflexion direction. Eversion stiffness showed a steady increase in trends to a maximum increase of 67.5 Newton meters per radian at 50 kPa, an increase of 387.5% from the original free foot stiffness. Overall, the SR AFO exosuit showed promising results for healthy subjects. AnkleBot measured 2D ankle stiffness in the IE and DP directions with the user sitting and the foot free and unloaded. A dual axis robotic platform measured 2D ankle stiffness during quiet standing. The stiffness measured in the standing position resulted in a much higher measured ankle stiffness and in inversion than that of the seated trials. Unimpaired young individuals can achieve an ankle stiffness, thus the proposed design supports the hypothesis that it should be a sufficient active support to the ankle in the frontal plane without constraining natural DP ankle movement in the sagittal plane while worn. That concludes my presentation. Thank you so much for your time. I've included links for our sponsors, relevant and current research, as well as contact information for myself and my mentor, Dr. Ken Lee. Please feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear your feedback and to hear back from you.
Thank you so much for your time.